you joined Merchant Navy because you did not find a place in somewhere else. So you are just going around and roaming. Ah, uh, once I go into the ship, I will directly become the captain. No exams, no studying, and I enjoy my life. Have you heard any of this before? If you have, you are coming onto the right place. Keep watching because we are going to talk about something really, really interesting. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we will be talking about 10 different things you should know before joining a career in Merchant Navy. So without wasting any time, let's get started. The first thing that I would want to talk about is the placement. Nowadays, a lot of maritime colleges are opening around the world and because of which there is a difference in the demand and supply because of which a lot of seafarers are getting unplaced after completing their education. So that is one of the huge problems that shipping is facing right now. So before joining, just make sure that the college that you are joining has a good placement record and then only sit for the placement and dream about getting a job in Merchant Navy. The second thing that you should know are the contract duration these days. Nowadays, contract for the officers ranges between six months junior officers and four or five or even six months for the senior officers. And by senior officers, I am talking about the captain, the chief officer, the chief engineer and the second engineer. While the junior officers like the third engineer, fourth engineer, third officer and second officer, they are getting a contract of minimum six months on board. While the crew which is working is getting a contract somewhere between 8 to 10 or sometimes 11 or 12 months to the maximum. So yes, the contract durations these days are quite high and because of which you have to stay at sea for a long time and you develop some kind of you know monotonous behavior in your lifestyle because every day you are repeating the same cycle getting up in the morning completing your day and then going back again then repeating the same cycle after such a long time six months eight months ninth months has some of the detrimental effect on your mental health because of which a lot of seafarers may face some breakdowns or they may feel sad or they are mentally broken which may ruin their life and the lives of their family. So this is one of the bitter truths of the Merchant Navy. Before you want to join, just make sure that you are able to live alone or live with minimum social interaction for a certain period of time like 6 months, 7 months, 8 months and it does not harm you. For this, you can pursue some kind of hobby or you can develop, you know, watching some kind of movie series or anything on board that makes your mind calm. This is one of the things that a lot of people don't know and when they join, they just want to go back after one or two months because they are not feeling like home. Here you have minimum social interaction, only a limited number of people and longer contact duration adds to the misery. So remember this, that the contract is quite long and you have to stay away from your friends, family, girlfriends, boyfriends for a long period of time. So make sure you know this before joining. The third point that I would want to talk about is limited internet facility on board. As bad as it sounds, it is actually very, very worse. 80% of the ships now offer internet facilities to their crew on board. But do you know, you cannot watch Netflix or YouTube all the time on the ship and the speed that you are getting is barely minimum to make some WhatsApp conversation or sometime if you are very lucky, you can get a call to the social interaction becomes quite less. Of course, some companies are offering internet cards which you can buy and then you can serve some good internet. But if you take care about that, then one internet card, say 100 MB, may cost you around $10, $20. Some companies are giving free internet like Musk, but other companies you have to buy them. And because of that, you spend a major part of your salary that you earn on board into the internet facilities. And slowly, slowly you are pushing all your earnings into the internet, which gives you temporary happiness on board. While at home, I know we all are consuming data like anything. Even 1 GB, 2 GB, 10 GB is now becoming very less for us. But imagine living on a ship where you can get around 10 or 20 MB per day, the survival becomes quite tough. So be aware of this fact that the internet facility on board is bare minimum. No Instagramming, no WhatsApping, no YouTube videos and no Netflix all the time. So bear in mind before joining. Coming back to the fourth point that is limited or no shore leave at all. Yes, you heard that right. All the shore leaves have become bare minimum or maybe in some ports they are actually finished. 
earlier on some ships like container ships and bulk carriers you used to get a lot of shore leaves and people used to go around rome and take pictures and make you know beautiful whatsapp images and videos and then they would share it with their friends with their families and a lot of uh, images makes you feel oh wow i want to join merchant navy i want to travel the world but the scenario nowadays is becoming quite different the ports are having faster operations of the cargo because of which shore times become quite minimum and thus you cannot go ashore all the time you are working 10 hours in a day with a lot of physical jobs and once you get some time to go off you are very 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 tired then you go in your cabin and you just want to lie down and sleep forget about going ashore you are joining to work and you may get opportunity some days to go out but it is not a world tour so remember that the fifth point that i would want to talk about is study till you become the chief engineer or captain of the ship actually when i was joining i was told that okay in shipping the studies are quite less and as a young fellow i was quite happy okay enough of study but this is not the case when i went i saw that there are lots and lots of studies that are going around in the maritime colleges after you finish your college then you have to apply for the government examinations to get the license for whichever country you are working in you have to apply to that government to get a certificate of competency after which you can go and join the ship as an officer but after you join the ship as an officer you have to continue keep giving on examinations until you reach the highest or the apex rank that is the captain or chief engineer inside a ship till the time you attain them you have to keep on pushing yourself and study every time so this fact you should know that studies do not end after college you have to study all your life until you attain the highest rank in hierarchy on a ship so the sixth point that comes into my mind is the food for vegetarians if you are a vegetarian and you are a hardcore vegetarian if you not even eat eggs then life on board becomes a little bit tough for you i have seen my batchmates resigning from the company because they could not adjust with the food on board sometimes you have cooks from other countries who don't know how to make indian foods or even the foods you know which are normal to all the crew sometimes not so much interested in making such a variety of foods or they are exhausted from their long contracts that the food that they offer you on board it's not according to your liking a lot of vegetarian especially i have heard that they face a problem because at home they are getting proper vegetarian diet which includes the vegetables rice dal and everything else that we have on our homes but on a ship you have to rely on a limited supply of food items of course you are getting some of the things that they make like sometimes they are making veggies and you have fresh fruits and you have juices but imagine 6 or 7 or 8 or 9 or 10 months just relying on small veggies and juices and fruits and maggi is not the case for everyone you need some food to survive which you can fill your stomach with and feel hearty after a long long day at work so remember this if you are a hardcore vegetarian it might become a little bit difficult for you to adjust on board so the seventh point that i have for you is the lack of social life on board do you know that there are quite a less number of people on board minimum nowadays ranging from 20 to 25 we have a multinational crew which includes people from the philippines china ukraine india or pakistan or somewhere else so they might be not interested in talking to you all the time this creates a cut off between the crew on board imagine if you are the only indian on board and all the other people are from different nationality it becomes quite difficult you have some entertainment facilities on board but they are not so much that you can keep yourself entertained for 6 or 8 months like you have gaming controllers if you are a gamer then this is absolutely perfect for you but if you are not you cannot rely on the xbox or the ps4 for 6 to 8 months of your contract time. likewise all the social media apps that you might be using at home like you are posting pictures of instagram making reels on instagram and posting you know live videos on facebook or you are watching or consuming data on youtube all the time that is not the case that is possible on the ship adding to the little show leaves that we have the possibility of going on land also becomes less as a result of which people you know get little bit fatigued and they are not feeling so well from inside for long durations at sea so remember this point before joining that social interaction becomes a bare minimum so if you are one of the introvert guys who likes to live alone perfect this profession is the best for you but you if you are an extrovert and you want to party all the time and you are out with your friends all the time 
so it might become a little bit difficult for you to sustain on board the eighth point that i would want to tell is difficult seniors on board difficult senior on board refers to the top four ranks that we have on board sometimes they are not as good as they should be and they are continuously you know pushing the junior officers and the crew to work harder and harder and harder of course sometimes it is a very good thing to push the crew so that they perform to their best potential but a lot of times people are really you know having long contracts and then they are tired and they are mentally not feeling well somebody is having some problems at home somebody is having some issues and then continuous pushing by the seniors whether it is officers from the deck or officers from the engine room it becomes quite difficult for the juniors or the crew to sustain on board so if you are that kind of guy that gets lighted up even after a small argument then i am sorry to say then you will have a difficult time on board so remember this point difficult seniors okay the ninth point that is there is sea sickness and limited medical facilities on board if you are having some big issues like i remember for instance one of the crew members of my ship suffered from an immediate heart attack all the crew was anxious and trying to do their best but we are not trained medical doctors on board things get very serious then you have to drop the person to the nearest shore facility sometimes you might be in the middle of the pacific ocean or in the middle of the arctic ocean or you are passing through anywhere where there is no land then it becomes quite difficult for you to fetch medical emergencies helicopters are also coming on board but helicopters also have a certain distance by which they can come and they can pick up they cannot come inside a stormy weather or if you are very far away from land then that situation becomes quite difficult on board adding to the point is the point of sea sickness a lot of people once they get onto the ship they, the ship is having motions like rolling pitching and because of which a lot of people develop some kind of sea sickness as a result of which they are vomiting all the time they are not feeling well and they are getting fevers sometimes so this is something that you must keep in your mind if you are that kind of guy who is going on a road trip and then you are vomiting here and there and every time you might face some problem this is not something permanent but this is one point that you must consider before joining a ship that the rolling or pitching may cause you a little bit of seasick and limited medical facilities on board so remember that the 10th and the final point is difficult working situations on board a ship if you are an engineer you are working inside an engine room and the temperature ranges minimum 35 to be very modest even in some hot countries or if you are passing through some hot canals or in the arab countries or inside africa the temperature might shoot up to 40 45 50 degrees inside the ship so you have to be aware that the temperature is reaching at such a high level and even for the deck officers at the port they are running in and around the ship all the times at least 20 times to check the cargo and then they have to face situations on the bridge like if they are passing through a stormy weather the ship is moving so much and then all your mind you are feeling some kind of unconscious or something and you have to tackle that situation or your own you cannot be a cry baby and say oh i am not feeling well i don't want to do that it is very hot for me it is not good for me you cannot rely on those excuses on board because of the limited crew you have to perform your job the high temperatures the running around all the time and the fatigue it might get inside your head all the time so just be sure that you know about this that the work conditions are not always merry and you have to do really 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 hard work to survive on board a ship so guys these were 10 of the points that i think you should know before joining your ship or thinking about a career in the merchant navy but a small note from my side that in spite of all these things and everything bad that i told you don't feel disheartened that this profession is not bored and you should never join it has its own perks and once you come to the seas you will realize that how you grow from a small boy that who comes or a small girl that joins to a bigger man or a strong independent woman so this profession also gives you the liberty also gives you the independence to earn on your own work for your own machineries be responsible for what you are doing it teaches you things like hard work tackling the mental pressures and surviving in difficult situations which might help you in other fields of life so these were the things that you should consider before joining the shipping line so what are your thoughts about those 10 points let me know in the comment section and if you like this video just give it a like and press the bell icon also subscribe to the channel so that you know next time whenever i am posting a video thank you so much for watching bye